Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to Seeds of Knowledge, a broadcast outreach of True Knowledge Ministries International in Mannington, West Virginia, USA. In a moment, you will hear the teaching ministry of Pastor Nick Lally. Please prepare yourself with a Bible and pen and paper to take notes. Following the teaching, our address will be given so you can write us with your prayer request. Now, here is Pastor Nick Lally with today's teaching. And we welcome you by internet, and we welcome you on all the stations out there. Thank you for tuning in, and most importantly, we welcome you here. And today, I'm going to do a teaching on Christ the Healer. And I, I want you to think about this here, Christ the Healer. Some of these scriptures, you're going to say, wow, you know, we've been listening to those scriptures for the past 10, 20 years. This book came out in 1877. Christ the Healer by Bosworth, F.F. F. Bosworth, 1877. Do you know how many? Uh, do you know how many years that is till now? I believe it's 135 years. The revelation this man had about healing is a, over a century old, and most of the body of Christ still don't believe it. Okay. When I was talking to you about the offerings and giving, I said you'll believe it, and you're all saying Amen. Well, that's a good thing to say. Okay, but when you really believe something, it has taken fact. The problem that we have, why we're going to talk about this today, the problem that we have, we're always saying we're going to. We're going to get out of debt, okay? We're going to get out of debt. We're going to be healed, okay? We're going to be delivered, you know? Uh, but instead, we listen to Uncle Billy, verse, chapter 6 and verse 12. You know, he lost his home. Or we listen to Aunt Millie, 11, 1. She was believing to get healed, and she died. You know, we're believing all the stories, all the circumstances, and all the ones that have other things to say. We're believing that over God's Word. And then we're still saying we believe God's Word. How could we really think that we believe we're going to heaven then? That's what I want to know. You know, we all think we believe something till the day comes where you have to face that, that giant in front of you. That's when you find out what you really believe, is that day, is what you find out what you really believe. Do you believe enough that all those voices that come at you tell you all those negative things, that you're going to finally have access to that, to that scripture where it says to pull down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring it to naught with the promises of God on your tongue. To, when that day comes, that's when you'll know what you really believe. See, just because I could quote a scripture doesn't mean I believe it, Okay. We have to believe it, and the, 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 the teachings have been too much on you, on me, about our level of faith. When we're going to reverse them and show you what the Word of God says, it's really how much do you believe God is trustworthy of His Word? How much do you really believe that God will watch over His Word to perform it? Because in Jeremiah 1.12, it says that God is watching over His Word to perform it. So really what happens is, as we become stronger in the relationship with our Lord, we become to know Him in a better way, then we realize that He is worthy of trusting. Okay? You know? Just think about it this way. You go into the airport, and you want to know who is, uh, who is, uh, who's going to pick me up? You know, am I going to have, uh, am I going to have Adrian uh, pick me up? Am I going to have Adrian pick me up? Uh, or, can I trust Adrian? Maybe he'll forget. Maybe, maybe Caleb will start going, goo goo gaga, daddy. Woo woo woo. Let's go see the fire engine. And he forgets. No, I know him enough by his character that he won't forget me. Are you listening to me? The same thing goes with God. When you get to know his faithfulness, okay? And you don't have to bribe God. God wants everything good for us. As we get to know that, that's where your level of faith goes up. Okay, you understanding? Remember with faith, faith is believing that you have what God said. Okay? You have the promises of God. Trusting God is trusting Him when you don't understand what's going on. That's when you need to trust God. Well, you know, Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but I trust you. So let's look into that a little bit. I'll read some from that, that book a little bit, Christ the Healer. 
And uh, it's over a century. That's 135 years old, but it's the, it's the same. It's the same scriptures in here, the same thing that we're preaching today. So in opening up, let me just read this first one here. And I'm reading out of uh, chapter 9. It says, faith that takes. Okay. So you don't need to turn to this one here. You could just listen to me. Because right away he quotes, uh, who knows the address of this book. Uh, if, if you know what I say, the address of it, I want you to wave your hand at me afterwards. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Anybody know that? Okay. You do? You do? Praise the Lord. And Pastor Jeff, it's Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's a scripture that's been taught for years and years and years and years. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Is it conditional? Absolutely. I mean, you can't say, God, go break their legs because they, they, they were bad to me. You know, God don't do that. You know, God go get the other guy's stuff. You know, it has to line up with the character of God. You know, uh, it has to line up with the character of God and you have to believe what things soever you desire. Here's the point. When you pray, you believe you receive them. Are you listening to me? When you pray, you believe you receive them. When I got an evil report not long ago, I prayed. I spoke the scriptures. I prayed. Well, about three days went by, and you know what? I was already healed after three days. The first two days and 23 hours, like this. I trust God, but I didn't, I didn't have it. Are you listening to me? You know, are you listening to me? I tell you stories many times. I had a hernia and happened to be going out to South Bend, Indiana, and uh, I went into Benny Hinn's meeting, and boom, I got healed. Well, you know, three weeks before that, I was in the Word on healing every single day, two, three, four, five times a day, reading about God wanted, already provided healing for me. And that was just the icing on the cake when that man touched me. Are you listening? Okay, so there's a difference because I'm a believer. I should believe besides the anointing of a healing on a ministry. Another one was uh, Joan, uh, Joan Hunter. And I remembered what it was. It was I had sciatic nerve in my leg. Oh, for weeks and weeks, I think maybe even a couple of months. And I, I was speaking the word, speaking the word, speaking the word. But I had such pain in my leg. And uh, walked in that meeting, and as, media, as soon as I walked in the armory in Fairmont, bam, that healing came on me. I was healed. But when she called, the first call she had, anybody has sciatic nerve problems in this place come up. I went up as an act of faith to confess and to stand before people what I already received when I walked in the door. Are you listening to me? I went home that day, and I dug two, over 200 foot of ditch by hand with a hoe and a shovel. That's how good I felt. Are you listening to me? Yeah, it needed to be done anyway. It was on my farm. I've been in it for no reason. But it was something I wanted to do and I couldn't do because of all the pain. Uh, are, you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, but it had to be something that I had to do also. I had to get in the Word and, and get myself full of the Word to block out all the voices. You're never, you're never going to do that. You're going to wind up being crippled. You're never going to do that. Okay, what was the other one? The hernia. You have to go in and get that thing. Hey, you do what you have to do, but if there's another way, okay, I'd say go for the other way. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Okay, so that's what we're going to look at today, and it'll help us in all areas of our life. So Mark eleven twenty four. if you're taking notes, that's it. Let me read this, uh, this man's uh, first page here, and then we'll look at some more scriptures. Faith, a title deed. Now, faith is the evidence, our title deed, of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. In Jeremiah, a title deed is repeatedly spoken of as the evidence. Your deed is the evidence or proof that you own your home. Listen to this, okay? Where's Jennifer next door with the kids? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thinking because she just bought a home not long ago. Your deed is the evidence or the proof of you own your home. So faith is the title deed, what you have not yet seen. When you have given a deed to a home which you have not yet seen, you already have the home before you see it. 
So in other words, when they give me the piece of paper at the closing, I have the home. I own the home. I don't have to go to the address to look at the home and get inside it to own it. You own it with the piece of paper, okay? Faith is the title deed, the ownership of things hoped for. Are you listening? Okay. <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus repeatedly said, he that believeth had. Uh, Moffat's translation, that's another translation of Hebrews 1, reads, faith means we are convinced that we have what we do not see. See, now the world says this is foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.28 says that. That God would take the foolish things of the world, the confound the wise. So you know, this is why you're mocked. Oh, you're one of those faith people? Okay. See, it's more than confession. You don't confess like a parakeet to get something. Okay. Your confession has given you the confidence that you know. You know, uh, I don't have anybody pray for me anymore to get healed. Okay. If someone prays for me to get healed, I stop them. I say, excuse me, I'm already healed. Are you listening to me? Because what, when did that happen? When I received it in my heart. Okay. When you receive it in your heart, what do you do after that? Just thank the Lord. It's already done. Yeah, that's the prayer of faith, the prayer of thanksgiving. There's so many different types of prayer. And you don't take someone else's faith and you don't use your faith on your children. Are you listening to me? You can believe God, but if you don't see a manifestation, you take your child to the doctor or wherever they have to go. Just don't let them drug them. That's all. But, you know, you don't use your faith on other people. Everybody loves to use their faith on someone else. Someone else hears you going through, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, why don't you use that for yourself? Amen? It's always easier to see for the other person. Use it for yourself. Okay? That's what you have to do. Are you understanding? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Are you excited? Amen. Yeah, this is from my sister Amy. She's not here, of course. <laughs> she's she's just, uh, from your sister Amy. Praise God. It's a bookmark. Who knows how many years that's in there? Praise God. 135 years old, this book is. 135 years old. It's in its eighth print of edition. That might sound like a lot. Uh, more than 150,000 copies in print. You would think there's even more than that. Christ the healer. So that's what we're looking at, some of the, the remarks that this man made. Go over to Romans in chapter 14. I'm going to use the Amplified Bible. Romans in chapter 14. Uh, chapter 4, excuse me. Now, we've looked at these scriptures. I believe we did. If you're new in the church, you might not have for a while. But uh, over the years, and, you know... Uh, those of you who remember uh, Dad Hagen, Kenneth Hagen Sr., he's gone to be with the Lord many years ago, powerful man of God, and he preached the same message over and over and over for 50 years. And people would say to him, when are you going to have a new message? And he says, well, when you get this one. He said, he wasn't intimidated to try to perform for people. That was what God told him to preach, and he preached it. But I found out that every so many months, he would read this book to keep his health. You know, he would read this book to keep his health. And no matter what he had, that man, you know, he, he, he would never admit to taking anything, you know. Uh, and, and people years ago, 50 years ago, that was even tougher than today. You know, today they still mock you, you know, uh, because you don't approach it the right way. I'll give you an example. Your nose is running, you're sneezing, and someone says to you, <clears throat> oh, you got a cold. Oh, no, I don't have a cold. You know, that's the wrong answer. You know, you might have a cold, but you're healed. Are you listening to me? Uh, nobody wants to say that. They don't want to take the weight of that. What do you mean you're healed? You're healed. Called into things that are not as though they were. That's what we're going to look at. Okay, you're healed. But to deny that you have the cold, deny you have a broken leg, deny you have lung cancer, deny you have anything if there's facts, you have it. But it's gone. You're done. You're healed when you believe it. So you don't deny you don't have, you know, what's wrong with your foot? Nothing. You know, I have nothing wrong with my foot. You know, it's all right. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. You know, that's stupidity. That is not the right, that's not faith. 
Okay? Faith is saying that I'm healed. I receive my healing. That's what faith is. All right? Calling the things that are not as though they were. Because God promised us. Not because you're some great faith person. Let's look at that. <clears throat> Amplified Bible will be a little more wordier than yours. In Romans in chapter 4 and verse 16. Therefore, inheriting the promise is an outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith. In order, so what does it depend on? Faith, faith. okay. In order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor, to be stable and valid and guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the devotees in inheritance of the law, which was the Jewish people, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is thus the father of all of us. So you're born again? Okay, so then you were grafted in as a Gentile to our father Abraham. The other ones they're talking about is the Jewish people. Do you know when the Jewish people rejected Jesus as being the Lord and Savior, okay, that's when we got an opportunity for the gospel. Right then, God says, well, you know, now, now I'm going to open up the door. So before that, Jesus never talked in parables until the Jews rejected him. Then everything came in parables. You know, just think if we could understand everything in the Word of God, like we get a revelation here and a revelation there, everybody would follow God. You know, if, if it was really that clear like that. But it's not. Everything went to parables except that he's in closed doors. He explained to his uh, disciples. He explained to them what things meant. When he sat down and make a covenant with Abraham, the Bible says that Jesus sat with him and told him the whole plan of salvation. You know, just think of the little things that you and I are believing for, and then how would you like if an angel came to you in the middle of the night and says, the, 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 the holy God is going to come upon you, and you're going to have a child, and his name is going to be Jesus. Mary says, be it done according to thy word. You know. You'd say, get out of here. What are you, nuts? Amen? We're not, we don't have to be believing those kind of things, but yet we still struggle with believing. <clears throat> and if we don't think it's on, on, on our half that the blocker is, then what we're saying is God is really not trustworthy of what he's saying. So if that's the case, when you said in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, when you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, that Jesus is Lord, and he died again and rose again for your, for your salvation, and, and that you're saved now when you go into heaven. How do you know that's true? How do you know that's true? If you don't believe the other promises. How come the Africans could work miracles over there years ago, work miracles over there, and over here, if you, if you see miracles, everybody tells you there's something wrong. Okay, familiar spirits, witchcraft. I mean, every filthy thing. Uh, but it's in the Bible. They said that Jesus had a demon, didn't they? Yeah, it's in the Bible. But how come the Africans couldn't put a metal roof on their, on their church? They couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't believe for a metal roof on their church. Well, because the missionaries went over there hundreds and hundreds of years ago and taught them about the healing power, the deliverance power, the saving power of Jesus Christ, and went over there and built buildings for them. So they never needed to learn to believe God for anything. They wait for the Mzungu, the white man, to come with the money, to buy the brick, to buy the tin, and they never learned. Now they're learning. Are you listening to me? So really, we only get what we, what we learn about. You know, look on TV, look at certain church, they're preaching salvation every single Sunday to the same congregation, the same congregation. I want to know is, when are they going to get saved and move on, is what I want to know. Are you listening to me? Every single week about salvation. Well, salvation's good, but that's only the starting point. If we need to know about other things, amen? Well, you are awful quiet, okay. Look at verse 17. Let me read here in the... Uh, the New American Standard says, As it is written, the Father, many a nations I have made you in the sight of him who believe, even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So God told Abraham 
that he was going to be the father of many nations. Listen to verse 17, Amplify. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, speaking about their reproduction organs, Sarah's dead womb and Abraham being old. And they says, yeah, I'm going to have a child. And they laughed. The angels heard Sarah laughing about it. And, and, he, and he says, why did you laugh in there? So, you know, what did they try to do? They tried to get Haggai. Okay, was that her name, Haggai? Haggai? Yeah. Try to get her to have a child for Abraham. Ishmael, we're still fighting with them today. That's the Islamic countries that are trying to take over still today from that one mistake. In sight of God whom believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existing things that he has foretold and promised as if they already exist. There's your grounds for what you receive by faith from God. He says, you, when you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, he died for you, you shall be saved and you're going to go to heaven. The old man comes out the inside and the new man comes in the inside. Okay? Are you listening to me? Colossians teaches us that. What happened? You believed it. So what about 1 Peter? I believe it's 1 Peter 2.24 by the stripes on the back of Jesus. We what? Were. were. Say it. Were. were. We were healed. Not we're going to be healed. Okay? And you'll find that in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53 the, uh, the redemption chapter, it was prophesied way back then. By the stripes on his back, you will be healed. Okay? You have to see this here. So why can we believe that we're going to heaven, but we're not sure about this other part here? Because of the resistance. Because of the backslidden church that doesn't really know too much about anything because we're consumed with our blessings. Are you listening to me? Now, there's nothing wrong with being blessed but there's something wrong when the blessings have a hold of you and they interfere, and that's what we have in our culture, okay? And we have this spirit of religion, just like Jesus had to deal with it in the temples, the Pharisee spirit, you know? Uh, you know, it, it, any kind of manifestation of the power of God, and, you know, they, they're saying there's something wrong with it. Well, the younger people want the power of God. The older people have just become starched and hard and don't want nothing because they didn't see it work. But they don't take one moment to say, well, you know, if I say this don't work, what I'm saying is that God's not trustworthy, that his word is not true. Or I could say, hey, you know what? I really need to press into the word of God and think about it. Think about what you read. You know, lay your hand on that Bible. You know, my sister first to told me when I didn't know nothing. She says, Nick, every day when you read the Bible, put your hand on it. And say, God, I believe what you wrote. Now help me to understand it every single day. And before you know it, I started understanding things every single day. Every single day I get up today, I do the same thing. I just thank the Lord. I'm waking up. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I love you so much today. Help me to be who you call me to be. Keep me from deception. Keep me from all of the pressures of the world system. Okay, every single day, every single day, you know, because why? Because I can't do it without him, you know, and that's the place we have to come to and take the weight off of faith. Faith is trust. Take the weight off of that on yourself. When I get the faith like Benny Hinn, when I get faith like Kenneth Copeland, when I get faith like Dr. Uh, Charles Stanley, you know, or Dr. Kennedy, you know, all those men are great men of faith don't matter, Baptist, Presbyterian, or charismatic, great men of faith. Well, you don't need their faith. You need to take the measure of faith that was given to you in Romans 12, 3, and to exercise that measure of faith that was given to each and every one of us and become someone who believes God and what he's saying. Okay? That's the easy cop-out on here. We, we mix up spiritual things with natural things, you know? You know, I want to become a good car mechanic like that guy, ba ba ba, because he's trained and is good, okay? You might have to train, right, to be good. Okay. You know, I've, uh, 
I don't know who it was, but someone was listening to someone and says, wow, I really love to play the, the piano like that. And the Lord told them, no, you don't, because you, you don't practice. You know, people just want something zapped on them, like the microwave society. Just put me in there, zap me, and then I can do it. You know. All righty. <clears throat> so we see that there, the promise that they already existed. So he speaks the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as, as they already existed. A few weeks ago, I asked you, you know, how many of you are believing to get healed? And some of you raised your hand. And then I says, well, do you even know the scriptures you're standing on? You know? How many of you believe in to get out of debt? Well, wh well, why should you get out of debt? Where, where's the scripture? Tell me about it. God wants me out of debt. Well, how do you know? Where's the scripture? Why am I asking you what scripture? You need it. I was already healed when I found that I read Romans Chapter 4, verse 16 through 21, and 1 Corinthians 12, 28, 128, excuse me. And I said, wow, I received that. Even though I've been preaching that for years and years and years. You have to know what you're standing on. You have to know until it gets in your heart and it manifests up in your head. You have to know. Are you listening to me? You know? You got to block out all, you know... Oh, there's so many things. You know, if I'm believing for healing, I get, well, you know, your sister Amy died of cancer. Well, that's a true fact. That has nothing to do with me. Amen. You know? Pastor Billy Joe Doherty, he died at 62. Look at his ministry. Worldwide. None of your business. Amen. See what I mean? It's no longer Hebrews 11.1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And what about Hebrews eleven six? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word diligent means putting a demand on the promises of God. No, it's now it's Uncle Billy eleven six, Aunt Millie eleven one. Circumstances, people. Are you listening to me? These are natural carnal thoughts, but they should not overweigh the Word of God. But if you hang around with all the miserable people that are probably your best friends, and you don't have more Word in you, you'll believe, you know, begin to li uh, listen to that. Thanks for listening today to Seeds of Knowledge. We would like to hear from you. Write us at TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, West Virginia, 26582. That's TKM. P.O. Box 46, Mannington, spelled M-A-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N, -N West Virginia, abbreviated W-V-26582. You can email us at tkm at westco.net. Westco is spelled W-E-S-T-C-O. Be sure to visit our website at www.tkmi.org or you can hear this broadcast again or a wide selection of other teachings by Pastor Nick. Until our next broadcast, may God bless you and meet your every need.